dear friends, family, and strangers who may or may not watch this video. We are gathered here today after 10 years, 10 long years of promises, teases, and mentions to celebrate the release of Final Fantasy XV. Base Square has rewarded our patience with this prestigious title, and it is our job, my job, your job, to cast judgment. So, for anyone who doesn't already know, the story is once again, Kingdom A is under attack by Empire B. Kingdom A has the magic, Kingdom B has science and an evil ruler. It's, it's old hat, really. Um, yeah, once again, the Empire is going to break whatever treaty. They're going to steal the crystal or break it, which is, of course, the power for Kingdom A. So, as this game was drip-feeding us information, uh, I didn't realize how honestly tired this story concept was. It's always the ones using Magitech, always stealing, breaking crystals, and breaking treaties, promises, stuff like that. Uh, it's never for a good reason, and even if there was a good reason, the methods that they take make the Empire look like the second coming of Hitler or something. And it's, it's old. It's tired like five games have been written this way and this is another one <laughs> so when the game starts uh, they give you an even more mundane tutorial than in episode Duskae or however the hell you say it the demo that they gave you when you pre-order type 0 and it's narrated by everyone's favorite squeaky toy carbuncle and then after that, it's some choppy flashbacks mixed with footage from the companion movie King's Glaive. And that's annoying. Because between two demos, a crappy anime OVA, and a pretty alright action movie, all they've given us is a bunch of answers to questions that nobody ever asked. I get wanting to make the story fleshed out, but the main gist was never a secret, and all of these various forms of media all they did was skirt around what we would be doing in this game. So, I mean, as far as story goes, this story has been done before, and it's been done better. And as for Noctis and the rest of NSYNC, I don't believe they're a group of friends at all. I mean, the trick to selling uh, a dynamic, whether it's between two siblings or four friends, is not to make them that guy. And what I mean by that is, Noctis is the edgelord, the dark brood. Prompto is the comic relief, the idiot, dumbass. Ignis is the smart and boring one. And Gladios is the strong, muscle head, tough guy. Now, as someone who has real friends, I can tell you right now, our group doesn't have a smart one or a funny one. Each of our personalities transcend these boring archetypes and it makes our group dy dynamic fluid and this isn't something that's new Final Fantasy games have always pretty much always failed at making unique personalities in a world where one second you're casting death magic fireballs ancient spells and stuff and the next second you're in the middle of a sappy love story that's being shoved down your throat and Final Fantasy definitely has that with the the planned marriage between Noctis and Princess Luna Bufu, whatever her name is, Luna something, the moon chick. And very early on, it's made evident that that shit ain't gonna happen. And if it does, it's not gonna happen for a while. So with characters and the story out of the way, we can talk about this world. And man, oh man, this world is awesome. It's mind blowing. You can pretty much stop anywhere and take a screenshot and have a really badass wallpaper. And yeah, it's, it's a huge world. Everyone was worried that there would be nothing to do in it. And luckily, that's not really the case. Whenever you have giant maps like this, you run into one or two scenarios. It's either so empty that you get bored after a couple of minutes, or it's so jam-packed that you can't take two steps without getting sidetracked. And in this game, there is balance. So, uh, for example, once I was done fighting monsters, I 
tripped over a bunch of really neat mini games. I found like four in less than an hour. Uh, there was fishing, dart throwing, this weird RPG pinball game that was awesome. I spent like an hour, like 20 minutes playing that. And then there's also Prompto constantly saying, yo, let's take a cool picture, which is really cool. So there's always really something to do, even if it's not exactly just killing monsters mindlessly. And I want to say that the day and night thing is cool in this game, but it's really annoying when the sun goes down Not. and like 20 different people say, go to fucking night. sleep, monsters are bad, and then I have to drop what I'm doing to go find a hotel or a campsite. I mean, yeah. Let's seriously, the prince just finds oh. out that his dad is dead, Pops is night. gone, King is dead, and now they send me on a quest to collect some 13 magic bullshit weapons. But it's past his bedtime, so the guys have to stop for the night. It's really pace-breaking stuff. And because I listen when an army of people tell me the same thing over and over, I don't even know what the world looks like at night. I haven't even gotten to see it. Like, imagine our planet just ceases to function when the sun pieces out. It wouldn't get shit done, even in the desert where the days are longer. And speaking of pace... Because the walking speed is the same in battle as it is out, traversing the big map is a gigantic pain in the ass, unless you're using the regalia. Oh wait, that's a car, and it's not meant for off-road travel. But, I mean, that's that. Although when you are in the car, it is pretty cool. Uh, pretty much anyone who gets this game is going to have a bunch of neat paint jobs on top of the paint that you can make yourself by collecting wild Crayola grounds. And as usual, the music is fantastic, not only with the game's original soundtrack, but also tracks from the other Final Fantasy games. And I, of course, haven't collected them all, but the songs I do have are varied enough where I'm not listening to repeats or picking out the only ones I like. So there's a good Hammerhead is like mix no in there. Ever. You know? But, as quick as I am to praise the car, I'm going to bash it too, because I set it to manual mode so I could drive, and the game really doesn't want you to do that, and I had to swerve into the other lane just to see if I was really in control, because the, the, con the car controls so stiff, and it really doesn't feel like a driving game. I didn't expect it to, but honestly... Manual mode felt like I was going forward with the ability to turn slightly. And I, I don't know, I, I kind of felt like that was not necessary. Like they could have just done auto mode and said screw it. But I do admit that kicking back and taking in the scenery while listening to music, both new and old, is cool. Uh, even if it does feel like the car is full of strangers doing their best to get along. I mean, even as I edit this video, I can't, I can't get the beautiful tone of the harp and that She's gorgeous right. voice singing Stand oh, By so Me out of my head. Who's the lucky imaginary lady? Uh, in past videos and to friends, close friends, even strangers, I came down on this game really hard. I, I was among the first to bash this game, which is weird because I'm a gigantic Final Fantasy fan, as I've said before. Uh, I wasn't entirely wrong about any of my complaints, but I can say that out of all the games that came out this year, you can do worse than this one. I mean, I know I'll come back to it, I just don't know when or for how long, but it is a Final Fantasy game, and I'm still proud to call myself a fan. So, do I support Final Fantasy XV? Yes. Yeah. After saying that the demo was terrible, it is. I stand by that past review. This game made enough changes, but kept enough to the same where I can say, yeah. Go ahead and get this if you're interested. But, I will say that this is not a game for first-timers. That's for damn sure. I don't, it doesn't matter what they put at the start of their game. You want to start a Final Fantasy game? Go play World of Final Fantasy. It's a great game, and I would say it's a better game a better representation of what the series is like and what you're in for long term. It would be nice to say that going forward all Final Fantasy games are going to have this level of quality, but 
they've been sitting on this for 10 years and we got to be realistic this is not going to happen again but yeah we waited 10 years and this game most certainly does not live up to the hype and the promises but it's not disappointing i'm not sad i'm not angry about it um that's really all i have to say about it that's final fantasy 15